Welcome back to the channel. So what goes into servicing an electric vehicle? It's a great question and one that often gets forgotten about. We all talk about range, 0 to 60 times, efficiency, but every now and then we've got to get our cars to an expert to give it the once over. Today we're looking at some of the differences between servicing a fossil engine and an EV. So stick around for the details. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel and if you like this series hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. So let's start from the ground up. The only part of your car that actually touches the ground, those four patches of rubber. Tires, obviously, an integral part of any car. And with EVs, just the same as a piston car. Check those tires for cracks, uneven wear, and of course the appropriate tread levels. Many EVs are actually heavier than their combustion counterparts thanks to that big battery we're carrying around so they can suffer a little more tire wear. Couple that with the instant torque that you get in an EV and some EV drivers will find the driven tires wear out a little bit faster depending on how much fun you have with your right foot and also when buying replacement tires make sure you spec them correctly for the weight of your vehicle. Brakes. In terms of brakes, moving on to one of the best bits of EVs and servicing because there's not too much here. Brake pads and brake discs, so the rotors, uh, keep in good condition a lot longer thanks to regen braking. If you want to know more about regenerative braking, check out our other videos all about that. The great benefit is instead of friction brakes clamping down and generating heat, the energy is used to slow the car and recharge the battery. The motor is slowing you down. It means that many EV owners can go years with no change to their brakes, but do get them checked by a professional. There's actually the problem that we can have with EVs that we don't use them enough. The battery in an EV is one of the things that gets the most attention when it comes to talking about maintaining EVs. But in fact, there's not really any moving parts discounting the electrons, of course. For sure, the battery is gonna degrade over time, but it won't need to be serviced in a manner that we are accustomed to, like catalytic converter changes and just oil changes. There are specialists out there that will take apart a battery pack and replace rebalance cells, etc. Pretty rare occasion that that needs to be done, and normally only that takes place after a lot of driving. Most EV makers, have very long warranties on the battery as well. Expensive battery replacements are spoken about a lot, but EV batteries last so much longer than the naysayers want you to believe. Yeah, some older Nissan Leafs and Zoes might get upgraded recently, but he's talking about cars that have been around nearly a decade now. Let's talk about the motor. So back in the day when you'd take your stinky old diesel in for some servicing, there'd be a lot to do. I mean, off the top of my head, timing belts, oil changes, spark plugs, filters, the list goes on and on. I've been there, I've spent the money. In comparison, an EV motor has uh, roughly yeah, maybe 20 moving parts, it, it differs. But uh, you know, at that, manufacturers will tell you that it's a sealed unit anyway. They're not gonna take a motor apart to maintain it. Essentially, it's no maintenance. And if the worst happens, it'll be a like-for-like -like replacement on that unit. Let's talk about the usual suspects because we don't want to paint a picture that EVs kind of magically never need servicing. We've mentioned tires and brakes. There's a few other things that EVs need looking after, but no different really to fossil cars. Yes, you will need to get your air filter changed from time to time, depending on the climate and where you live, how you use your vehicle as well. Not everyone drives an EV. There's so much poor air quality out there from various sources. So keep your heating and ventilation air conditioning system in check. That includes maybe topping up the coolant for your air conditioning. There are some other items as well, like the suspension. Make sure that gets checked as it can suffer just as much in an EV as a combustion car. And again, I talked about the weight of EVs can put extra stresses on some of those parts. The service will also check things like wheel alignment, and the lights as well. Danger! Hey, voltage! Now, the last thing I want to say is squared. At those that like to maintain their own cars, lift up the bonnet. What's under the hood? Look, I've been there. My first car was a little Fiat that I could tinker with. I've been there. I've done it. I've loved playing with EVs over the years, but I would never play with the electrics. An EV might be simple. To describe 
a battery, motor, inverter, some wheels, etc. But all of the heavy duty work is done by the traction battery. High voltage wiring is not to be messed with. Having something like an a, a 800 volt architecture at the most in new cars, most cars coming around 400 volts. Teslas can be around 350, others can be 450. Look, either way, it doesn't matter what the voltage of your EV is. If you see those orange cables, don't mess around with them. It's the HV stuff. And really, if you get involved in that and get it wrong, it's gonna give you a really bad day. It's worth doing a bit of research before your EV service is due. So where I am, we have something called Hevra, which is the Hybrid and Electric Vehicle Alliance. They have a list of approved and qualified EV mechanics, and there may be something similar where you're watching this around the world. Another benefit of going with an expert is they're gonna have relevant diagnostic machinery and software to check your car. For example, you might want to tap into the BMS, that is the Battery Management System. You can check on the voltage down to cell level, and if you see an imbalance, that could restrict the power and range of your EV. And finally, a word on costs. As you've gathered by now, there's so much less to maintain in an EV, but does that mean you'll be paying a lot less to have your vehicle serviced? Well, in theory, that's how it should work out. You should save some money. There are some vehicles, we'll take Tesla as one example, they have no fixed service period. But we still recommend you do get your car checked, for roadworthiness at least. And when you have your EV service, that does come down to every different manufacturer. Some EVs have gone tens of thousands of miles with no service and no known defects. But I don't recommend crossing your fingers and hoping everything is fine. Follow the manufacturer's advice to keep your car safe for you and everyone else on the road. That's enough from us today. Hope you enjoyed this show as always, our series to help you understand more about electric vehicles. Let us know what you think about EV servicing. Do you have an EV? And if so, how have you had it serviced? Where? How often has it been maintained since you got the car? Does more need to be done in the industry to train mechanics on EV servicing? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for watching today. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we know you liked it and we'll make more just like it. And we'll see you on the next one.